On June 4, 1967, the infant state of Israel found itself on the brink of annihilation. Israelis still lived with the agonizing memory of the Holocaust. Now the Arab nations surrounding Israel vowed to make the blue Mediterranean run red with the blood of Jews. We were thinking in terms of the Israelis are going to be thrown to the water. On the morning of June 5, 1967, Eitan Ben Eliyahu flew one of the first missions against Egyptian airfields in the Sinai. This is the matter of life and death. This is the matter of Israel is going to be destroyed. Uh, people were in panic. Uh, people were talking about uh, the imminent destruction of the state of Israel of a war in which there will be an enormous number of casualties, at least 10,000 people will be killed. Rabbis in Jerusalem anticipated so many deaths, they actually designated all of the public parks in Jerusalem as cemeteries. Just before the war, the joke in Israel was, last ones out, turn off the lights. But this black humor didn't mask the fear that many Israelis genuinely anticipated a catastrophe. Israel found itself outnumbered and outgunned on three fronts, Egypt to the south, Jordan to the east, and Syria to the north. The Soviet Union had poured $2 billion worth of arms into the Arab nations. Israel's enemies brought twice as many soldiers, three times as many tanks, and four times as many airplanes to the battlefield. But just before the war, Egypt, Israel's main enemy, suffered a series of major mistakes and mishaps. There was this... Uh a miscommunication between the president Nasser uh, and his top generals and everything didn't work according to what they thought and when the war broke uh, you could see and hear which we did we heard them you could see and hear that the Egyptian high command was not in control Egypt's high command also dismissed warnings by mid-level Egyptian intelligence officers of an imminent Israeli air attack the night before the war, Egypt's commander-in-chief, Abed Amir, gathered his high command for a party at an airbase far away from the front lines. They were caught uh, by surprise, totally. I mean, some of them were trying to uh, take to the air in order to join their units. They couldn't do it. Two weeks before the war, Egypt replaced nearly all of its commanders in Sinai with officers unfamiliar with the terrain. On the morning of June 5th, Jordanian radar detected the Israeli Air Force taking off. They sent a red alert to Cairo, but the decoding officer used the wrong day's code and failed to decipher the vital information. The warning never came. Instead, the Israeli Air Force decimated the Egyptian Air Force on the ground, the key to the outcome of the war. Some, like author Sarah Rigler, who's written on the Six-Day War, believe this series of Egyptian mistakes reveals the work of an unseen hand. You can say, oh, wow, what a lucky coincidence. Or you can see the divine hand. We see that, that God arranged all these things to happen the way they did because he wanted the Israeli strike to succeed. He wanted us to win. He wanted us to regain our holy places. To some, the confusion in the Egyptian command just before the war evoked memories of the biblical story of Gideon routing the enemies of Israel. Instead of annihilation, Israel won one of the most decisive victories in military history. Many Orthodox Jews and Christians believe the Jewish nation had witnessed a miracle. For evangelical Christians, the Six-Day War was a huge moment of seeing God's hand intervene on behalf of the Jewish people. I mean, that was really was, I think, so extraordinary is that you had this moment where uh, Arab leaders, Islamic leaders, were saying we're going to throw Jews into the sea and it looked like another Holocaust was imminent and suddenly in six days uh, the Jewish people uh, defended themselves, destroyed their enemies, uh, tripled their land, recaptured control of Jerusalem for the first time in 2,000 years and on the seventh day they rested. That just sounded way too biblical for, uh, for evangelicals all over the planet and they, uh, they rejoiced with the Jewish people. In the immediate aftermath of the war, everyone, religious and secular alike, recognized that this was from God because it was just so implausible. I mean, here everybody was expecting a tremendous defeat. This is a miracle. Even Moshe Dayan, who was the commander of the Israeli forces, 
and who was a very secular person. He went to visit the Western Wall the day after it was liberated, and it was a tradition to put, you know, like put a little notes to God in the wall. So he put a little note to God between the crevices of the wall, and of course as soon as he left, the newspaper men in their typical <laughs> discreet way <laughs> ran and took the note out and read it. What did it say? And it was a line from Psalm that said, this is from God. It's wondrous in our eyes.